Hi guys, my name is Anna and welcome, super welcome to all of you to my channel. Today I'm going to prepare you for your first ever trip to Italy, especially if you dare go to Italy summertime. If you need to know more information or you're dying to ask me any question, please do it in the comments down below after this video. I will be happy to answer all of your questions. When you're coming to Rome, or in Italy in general, the first thing you should think about is very, very comfortable shoes. Have you seen the roads in Rome? Here we are, just look at it. To wear heels here, you must be born in Rome and start practicing to run on them since the age of, I don't know, since you are a teenager. Yes, wearing heels in Rome is a skill built for years and years. So my advice here would be trainers or a good pair of walking shoes. You can also wear moccasina shoes. You will look so much like Italian, but if you are planning to take long walks around the cities in Italy, after several hours of wearing your moccasina shoes, your feet might be on fire. Go to Italy summertime. Remember two major things. First, the best time to go to Italy summertime would be May, June until the middle of it, and September and onwards. Why those months? Because summertime is extremely hot in Italy, and starting from the second half of June until the very end of August, the temperature might rise up to 40 degrees Celsius. So be prepared for this. And second, when you go to Italy summertime, remember three things. Hat, sunglasses and sunscreen. Well, you don't need to bring those things with you at the beginning. Well, it's a great reason to open up your amazing trip with a fantastic shopping in Italy. Well, the best place for most branded possible shopping in Rome, Italy would be Via Candotti, right there, next to Spanish Steps. There you will find all well-known brands like Prada, Versace, Dior and many others. But if you want to have something super Italian, I would highly recommend checking those little streets coming from the main street. You will find lots of artisans, Italian shops there and the quality will be perfetto, italiano. But the price will be much less than those branded shops you will find in Via Candotti. Yes, Via Candotti it is. You also don't need to buy drinking water. For example, when you go to Rome, there are more than 2,500 drinking water fountains around the city called Nasoni. Just keep your empty bottle and put in Google search drinking water fountains in Rome and you will have a whole map of them to get the nearest one. This drinking water would be absolutely clean, 100% drinkable and free of charge. I enjoying this video so far. Don't forget to smash that like button and consider subscribing to my channel. More interesting things is yet to come. Number three, restaurants and churches in Italy have dress codes. As a general rule, Italians care deeply about clothing and appearance. They view it as the sign of respect for themselves and others. And that's why especially holy places requires some level of modesty. As a rule in Italy, when you go to visit a church, your shoulders and your legs must be covered. Long sleeve shirts or blouses, as well as skirts and long trousers might be also required in the restaurants, especially in the evening in Italy, where you usually cannot go wearing things like super short shirts, flip-flops, crop tops and other very summery clothes you brought for your holidays here. Number four, the riposo is a very good thing. Chiuso means closed in Italian 
and this is exactly what's going to happen during Riposo in Italy, afternoon rest. It can take place for about two hours from 1.30 to 4 p.m., depending on the business. Banks close, shops close, museums close. Even restaurants and bars might be closed during this time, except those ones in the most touristic areas. Don't fight it, enjoy it. Enjoy. Just take a little nap yourself or just go to the park and enjoy that lunch picnic, read a book and just relax. Relax. It's very easy to fall in love with this exceptional Italian rhythm of life and Italian lifestyle. Also, to let you know, most of the businesses will be closed on Sunday in Italy, including those large supermarkets and also pharmacies. But the restaurants, the majority of them, will be open. The last thing you can possibly die in Italy from would be starvation. However, talking about starvation, did I already tell you? My next video is going to be about what you should never ever wear in Italy not to annoy the Italians to death. Not to miss it out, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also, I would truly really appreciate your general like. Let's help other people to know more about Italy before their first trip to Italy to avoid those mistakes. Let's help them together, me, by filming all these interesting videos for you and you by smashing your like button. Did you smash your like button yet? Okay, thank you. Let's carry on. Number six. Observe the Ten Commandments of Coffee. A standard greeting in Italy is Prendiamo un caffè, which means do you care for coffee? Italians love their coffee. Giant coffee. And when you're in Italy, I would highly recommend you obeying all the customs, follow the rules, and of course, respect Italian coffee traditions. For example, all milky coffee is for the morning, for the first half of the day. Don't order one espresso. Espresso is a default for un caffè. Every time you're ordering un caffè in Italy, you will get espresso. If you want double espresso, go for espresso doppio. Next, take your coffee standing next to the bar. First of all, you will look so much like Italian and second, sometimes if you take your coffee to the table, you will need to pay some extra for additional service. Last but not least, please keep it simple, guys. No mint mocha frappuccino with soy milk outside Milano, please. Pro tip when you travel to Italy. Guys, please never order one latte for me, please. In Italian, latte means milk. And ordering just latte, you will end up having a glass of milk. If you're thinking of that milky hot beverage, you should go for cafe latte. Number seven. Coffee and pastry, this is what's for breakfast. As I already told you, Italians love eating, they love food. But for some reason, this rule doesn't apply for breakfast. Calazione. So when you go to Italy, do not expect those huge breakfast buffets, which you usually see in the hotels in your country. Forget those scrambled eggs, sausages, bacon and lots of hash browns for breakfast when you're in Italy. Customary Italian breakfast would be un caffè or perhaps cappuccino or that caffè latte and a pastry. I would recommend going for Italian cornetto. It's very similar to French croissant or brioche or any other pastry like crostata with some jam inside. And by the way, talking about that Italian bar, you're going to get your fantastic Italian coffee for breakfast. So number eight, Italian bar is far not the same as we all know in England or in the United States. In the UK, similar to the US, 
a bar is the place where people usually going to have a drink like a beer or a cocktail. In Italy, a bar is the place where you're going to get your morning coffee. And remember, if you want to look like the locals, you should have your coffee at the bar. First of all, it is a very old Italian tradition. And second, in this case, as I told you before, you will not need to pay that extra service charge. So have your morning coffee at the bar be like Italian. like Italian. One really important thing to consider when you're going to Italy. Italians do not order their cappuccino after 11 a.m. after lunchtime. So if you want to enjoy your coffee after lunchtime, you better go for macchiato. Macchiato has the same principle as cappuccino. It's going to be espresso with a splash of milk. You can go for hot or for cold. A few words about my filming gear, guys. I'm a regular traveler. As as you can see so for me it's really important to have my cameras lightweight so basically for filming my vlogs I'm using two cameras my first one is an action camera GoPro you don't need to be a vlogger to have that camera if you go for your holiday that's going to be the best option for you and my professional vlogging one is Sony ZV-1 so if you're planning to start your vlog that would be the best investment for you both links I'm going to give you in the description for this video those are affiliate links so you will be delivered directly to Amazon for all information you might need. If you have any question, please feel free to ask me in the comments down below. I will be happy to answer them all. Next, there is no such thing as an early dinner. When you're in Italy, don't expect to have your dinner before 7.30 p.m. Some of the restaurants don't even open before 8 p.m. and no amount of standing with your sad face pressed against their window will not make them open even a minute earlier. If you're planning to travel to Italy with the kids, an advice for you, make sure that you are packed with heavy lunches you can get them from any supermarket and also look for tourist friendly places which usually stay open for lunches and earlier dinners number nine payments good news for all of us the majority of places like the hotels restaurants tourist attractions they all accept credit cards but for smaller purchases like a coffee or gelato or a souvenir I would highly recommend you guys having a little cash carry cash all the time and smaller as better if you want one gelato or one cafe and believe me no one wants to give you a change from a 100 euros note number 10 no you cannot have that ranch dressing for your salad italy has an amazing food culture and while you're here you will try fantastic italian dishes however there are some rules of how to dine in italy and when you go to the restaurant here you should obey them. How you dress your salad is one of them. In Italy, only olio e accento means olive oil and balsamic vinegar. Of course, you can ask for that ranch dressing or French sauce in any of touristic places, but first of all, it will not be a true Italian experience. And secondly, it will not taste the same way you used to have at home. Just go with the food rules when you're in Italy. Believe me, Italians have been cooking their fantastic food for thousands of years. So when you're in Italy, just eat like an Italian. All right, well. The biggest no-nos, please, please guys, never try to order in Italy. First, pizza with pineapple. Second, pizza with chicken. Third, pasta with meatballs. Never ask ketchup for your pasta and never ask for cheese when you're ordering pasta with fish or seafood. As I told you in my previous video, those dishes do not 
exist in Italy. And if you try to order them, the Italians will just laugh at you. And depending on the region and the size of the town you are visiting in Italy, it might sometimes happen right in your face. Italians can be very straightforward and also overprotective when you break the laws of their food religion. Thank you so much, guys, for spending this day with me. I hope you enjoyed the video and now you feel like you're 100% ready to come to Italy for the first time in your life. I'm sure you will enjoy it so much and will eat everything you can possibly try in a gorgeous country as Italy. Stay safe, be happy and get ready to travel the world. Love you a lot. I will see you next week. Bye for now.